Good morning and welcome to the Marketing Rocket Fuel Podcast. I'm Michael. This is Drew. Drew, what's up? Hey, welcome to Marketing Rocket Fuel. I am so excited to be here today and, and be talking marketing with my with my good friend Michael. Uh, you know, it's been uh, been about a month since our last podcast. And a lot can happen in a month. It's, it's lots of stuff going on. It's, it's so much fun. Um, but uh, hey, before we get into that, I want to remind everybody, if this is your first time here or your 50th time here and you haven't done it yet, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we are a relatively new podcast, and we can use all the subscribers we can get. I would love to have you on here. And, and if you like something we're doing, comment. If you don't like something we're doing, comment and let us know how we can do it better. <laughs> Drew, I don't know if I'm going to um, stick with calling you Drew or Forrest, because anytime <laughs> that I see an update on any of the socials, you're either running, you're talking while you're running, or you're getting, you're receiving some sort of a medal from finishing uh, in your, uh, I almost said weight class. It's age group. <laughs> So I think I saw it. Yeah. I saw you jump into somebody's arms online. I was a little jealous, but I let it go. Tell tell everybody <laughs> listening and watching uh, a little bit about your running journey here this fall. Oh my gosh, it's been uh, been a tremendous month. I, I met um, uh, one of the goals that I had set for myself eighteen months ago. Well, really nineteen months ago now. Um, ran my first marathon. My goodness. Um, I ran the Charlotte Marathon, 26.2 miles, and um, it was not pretty. It was brutal. <laughs> it was tough. Uh, but I finished it. Um, and uh, you know, it was it was one of those things where um I I was trucking along, I I trained for it, and I, I had a nice even pace going. I knew what my pace needed to be. And uh, so that I could maintain that uh, and try to do, I call it the infinity pace, where you're trying to do a pace you can do almost indefinitely. And I saw the sign for mile 17 and my calf cramped up <laughs> like a rock. Yep. And I went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I walked most of the next eight miles, but... By golly, I finished that thing because I was like, I am not coming this far and not finishing. And and I've already booked my next one. Good for uh, you. So see, you're a better um, man than me. When I ran my marathon, I ran it was I call it a marathon. Technically it is a marathon, but it didn't feel like one just because it was the Disney marathon. And so the Disney <laughs> marathon, I don't know if you know this, every mile they have like a band or a character that you could take a picture with and mm -hmm. everybody dresses up. And so I did something similar happened to me. I started cramping at mile at the halfway point. Basically it was my left calf mm -hmm. and then it was my right quad and then my right qu calf and then my left quad. So my whole lower body's cramping. I'm walking mile 25. I'm walking and she must've been, 85 passes me smacks me on she <laughs> smacks me on the tush and goes pick it up sonny and pulls away from me <laughs> and there was nothing i could do about this is is the people that you meet along oh, yeah. the journey are amazing you yes. know uh uh i did i did a 5k here uh the saturday after thanksgiving uh so if you're watching this you know yeah we we uh, try to keep this evergreen, but you know, you, you kind of know when we're, when we're publishing these things, but, um, and buddy, the elf was there, oh, cool. um, had my best 5k time ever, ever. People were like, um, how long did it take you to recover from running the marathon? I said, well, I ran a 5k and had my best time ever. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I would consider myself recovered from that, but, uh, through the winter, I'm going to kind of maintain and, you know, you kind of, uh, you know, just like in life, you're kind of, you go up and you hit a, a plateau. You've got to be able to run at that plateau for a while. Yeah. And then you can kind of go up uh, to that next one. So over the winter, I'm going to try to stay on this plateau and then, uh, you know, hit towards my next challenge. Last week, we talked about when and why and how you should hire a marketing agency. 
in this episode. What are we talking about, Drew? Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, specific people on your marketing team, and we're going to start this episode with your marketing director. Ooh, starting Who at the is top. Who is a marketing director? What do they do? And uh, as we go through the season, we're going to be talking about different roles on the marketing team, uh, whether you're hiring an agency or whether you've got an in-house marketing team or, or a little bit of both. And so, so today we're going to get into what is a marketing director, because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what this role actually is and what it isn't. Um, so um, with that, I, I think uh, let's let's kind of get into the the official definition of a marketing director. And I can't think of a better place to, to find that than indeed.com. <laughs> um, according to indeed.com, a director, and I'm reading over here, but a director of marketing or marketing director oversees a company's promotion and advertising efforts to drive sales and build brand awareness. Their responsibilities include developing an overall marketing plan, approving campaigns, and measuring the return on investment of various marketing methods. Okay, now the key word in all of this is director. So if you think about this like a movie, uh, there, you know, everybody knows who the director is. You know, Steven Spielberg directs, you know, the the movie. Um, you know, and but there's also producers. Your marketing director is not the producer. Your producer is really the CEO of the company, uh, generally. Or, you know, there may be a VP of marketing, depending on how big the company is. Uh, but, you know, somebody that's above that, that marketing director that gives them the things that they need, that makes sure that everybody, you know, they're staffed appropriately, that they've got all the tools that, that are necessary to get that job done. But the marketing director is also not the talent. They're not the ones making the content, publishing to social media, building the websites. And a lot of companies get this mixed up where they yeah. hire somebody that's a marketing director and they expect to have one person that does it all. Yep. That's not what a marketing director does. And if you're trying to have somebody that's doing all of that stuff and you got a lot of stuff to do, they're going to fail at it every time. And so... We want to make sure that you, you have a good understanding of exactly what that role is. Now, in Charlotte, if you're hiring an in-house marketing director, the average salary for that is about $71,000 a year. Okay. Um, that salary is actually going down. Hmm. What? I know. In an age where prices of everything are going up and mar and most of your wages are going up and, you know, you, we see this in fast food a lot, you know, they can't find workers because they have to keep increasing wages. Um, this is actually going down because so many of these tasks and things that a marketing director does are being commoditized um, or a, a lot of marketing efforts, a lot of things in marketing are being commoditized. And so, that's an important thing to note. And in some cases, the marketing director actually becomes redundant in the process, not all the time. And we're going to talk a little bit here later about when you need a marketing director and when you don't. Uh, let me let me step in here real quick. So the question on the notes is, what is a marketing director? I, and I look at that and I was like, well, I, I was the the really bad version of this where <laughs> i felt like i got hired i've been marketing director for several companies and more often than not um i remember back in the day it was in in these arcades like in chuck e cheese or like these arcades remember what a mall was guys uh when you go to the mall <laughs> With a with a handful of quarters, and you go I spent so many times at the mall arcade when I was a kid. Absolutely, and there was this game called Whack a Mole, where it would mm -hmm. pop up, and you wouldn't know where it'd pop up, and you just smack it with a stick. Well, my role when I was a marketing director, uh, I was a marketing director for a couple real estate companies, and then a technology company. I was, I was, it was literally playing Whack a Mole, and. Uh, and the, 
it was frustrating for not only the leadership of the company, but for me, because most marketing directors that I've met, and I'm talking to you, marketing directors, you have this wide list of things that need to get done marketing wise. And everything tends to be half-baked because Drew, you said it. They expect you to be the talent. They expect you to be the director. They expect you to be the editor. They expect you to um, grab the coffee. They expect you to do everything when it comes to directing the marketing efforts of a company. And many times it's a disaster. And I think this is why salaries might be going down. Because really talented people, and I'm not saying I'm talented, I'm saying you're talented, but we talked about this in the pregame. Most marketing directors that I know, what happens? They get burned out, and then what do they do, Drew? They spin up their own? They quit and start an agency. There you go. That's exactly what they do. Yep. They Marketing directors get so overtasked and their job expectations are so unrealistic that they get burned out and they say, you know what? I, I can do this better if I have more, more freedom to do it myself right. and to do it the way I want it to be done. Well, I mean, it, that's kind of a myth because agencies don't just do whatever we want. No. But, but there's certainly more control when you're running your own agency and you know all these aspects right. and you um, but you have the things that you have freedom to do when you're running an agency is hire a team. Right. Um, now, you can't just hire everybody, you know, that you want. You know, we have budgets and, and you know, we have to make money to hire people and, and you know, it's a cycle. But um, we're actually going through a hiring process right now. Um, and, you know, you have to have the budget to hire somebody, but then you have to hire somebody to get the budget to hire somebody. Right. So, you know, it's um, – but – so many marketing directors are like, I am, I've had it with this. Uh, they've got a CEO that's either too distant, that never pays attention to anything until there's uh, a fire or a, or a big uh, something blows up. And then they're like right on top of it and, and all up in your face. Or they're too hands on and they've got their fingers down in the weeds and trying to, to get all up in your business all the time doing things that CEOs shouldn't be doing. Right. And the next episode here, here's a little preview. We're going to be talking about that CEO bottleneck. Mm. Oh, that's a, that's a big one. And I've been guilty of that. Uh, and <laughs> so I'm not I. going to throw Michael under the bus, but, uh, <laughs> but, and I've experienced that from an agency side, but, right. um, but, you know, they get frustrated in that role and, and it becomes very confining and, um, and it seems like they're always the person with a target on their back. Right. So, Drew, with that said, um, we're we're talking we're talking to you, business owner, CEO, leader of a company. Um, let's answer this question for them: Should I hire a full time marketing director? What say you, Drew? Well, and and that's a good question, and um, and um, you know, kind of just like the. Uh, the old guy, when uh, when somebody asked him boxers or brief, he said, it depends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can joke about that a little bit because I'm getting to be an old guy, but uh, fortunately I'm not in depends yet. Um, but um, yeah, that's, that's a total dad joke there. Um, here's, here's the advantages of having an in-house marketing director. Um, this person is going to have in-depth company knowledge and they're going to know your company inside and out they're going to understand the inner workings of it they're going to understand the inner office politics they're going to understand your vision where you want to go with the company and and they're going to be on site so that uh so that they can turn on a dime right um and that's a really important thing to have especially you know if you're a larger company um they're going to have, if if they're coming to the table as a marketing director, they should have industry knowledge. They should have a, a good finger on the pulse of what's trending and, and what's, um, you know, what are marketing best practices. They should be able to understand metrics and understand, um, you know, how how your marketing pays off because your marketing has to pay off. Right. If, otherwise, why are you marketing? 
You're just putting messages out there that don't bring you any money back. Um, the challenges with having an in-house marketing director, you've got a higher salary. You know, we talked about the median salary. So you're looking at that plus all your equipment, insurance, benefits, taxes, all, all of that stuff. And so, you, I mean, you're looking at six figures easy to bring in that person. Right. Um, and they still need to outsource talent. Because if you're actually hiring a marketing director, you're hiring a director, not the actor, not the the um, the cinematographer or anything like that. You're hiring the director, and they need the talent to to put to work. And so they're still going to have to outsource that talent, or you're going to have to build an entire marketing team, and those salaries will blow up fast. Right. Um, the other danger in hiring an in-house marketing director is they can start to get insulated or siloed thinking. Um, you know, anytime you've got an organization and they're not getting outside ideas, they're not getting um, they're not getting input from people who aren't in the thick of it. Um, it's hard to do things the way outside of the way they've always been done. Um, it's hard to get outside of the way you thought it should be done into thinking of new ideas, new creative ways to market your company. And so um, when you've got a, an in-house marketing director, it may be hard for them to, after a while, especially if they've been there for, for years and years and years, it's really hard to think outside of your business. It is. And so it is. That's, and, a, and, that's a big danger. And we talked about this in the pregame. We talked about this in the prep for this show. A glaring example of this and I got two points. A glaring example of this is the reason why marketing agencies struggle to do their own marketing. I I have <laughs> talked to business owners when I was had my own agency, and I likened this to trying to read trying to read a beer bottle label from inside the bottle. You're just too close to the business. You either care right. about it too much or you've done it a certain way. And you're just too, it's too in your face to make great decisions. Number two, another challenge that we didn't talk about that I do want to sort of put on to the business owner. I'm talking to you business owners out there. If you hire a marketing director, empower them to make decisions. You have to, right. we'll, we'll talk about that next week. But marketing directors out there, f fight for that, fight for that um, power to make decisions, marketing decisions that will drive business. Uh, if you don't, then you're, you're just lighting money on fire, business owners. You, you, you got to let these guys cook in the kitchen, direct the show, whatever analogy you want to use. But many times, marketing directors, and I was this person, we had this vision, we had this initiative, and then when it hit the CEO or the owner's desk, it was like, nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to do it this way. And it's like you throw your hands up and say, OK, cool. Let me just go post that blog post that gets no traffic. So, yeah. Well, and, and, and you know, kind of to take that analogy further, I mean, we've all seen movies where the director's vision was one thing but the studio got their fingers in it to try to do it the way the studio thought it should be done. And it turned out into a big steaming pile yeah. and, and, you know, and it, you know, and they didn't make their money back and, and they didn't, uh, they just burned a bunch of cash. Right. Um, the biggest mistake we, well, we'll get into the next episode, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Next episode, we'll talk about the biggest mistakes yes. CEOs make. Let's do that. Um, well, anyway, well, so so let's talk about, okay, we talked about when you should hire a marketing director. So when should you hire an agency instead? So let's talk a little bit about that because there are some pros and challenges to hiring an agency as well. Well, we've led up um, to this, right? Um, timing is a big piece of this, right? We mm -hmm. It's... it's you know, there's all kinds of phases in the life cycle of a company. And if you if you if you do this right, uh, you sort of grow into a position of being able to or needing to hire an agency. I'm looking at some of the notes here. Uh, you know, when you hire an agency, that means you're at a point where uh, you need a bigger team. But 
you want the the power of that bigger team for less money of than hiring that team in house. Uh, other things, right. other things uh, that you get when you hire an agency, and we touched on this, is diversity of ideas. You're bringing outside people, people that m are probably outside of your industry that may even use your product or know of your product and see it as a consumer or a customer. And mm -hmm. that is important because that brings empathy and the customer's voice to, to your marketing team. A couple other things uh, that we have here are market trends. Um, you know, you get some fresh voices, some, some fresh knowledge in there. Um, uh, atypical strategies, you know, if you're if you're marketing your in-house marketing, your marketing director is sort of spread thin, not able to innovate, not having enough margin in their day to make to be creative. Having an agency can bring some new ideas, some fresh fr fresh ideas to to the well, table. And that's where you get um, you get marketing campaigns that are outside of the box and really get attention and are really well executed. I mean, you think about things like, you know, if you think about Geico commercials, yep. um, you know, this is, this is a really good example of it. And I don't know what agency Geico uses or, or, oh, they or, don't use escape. Know, because... I thought they use escape plan, Mark, right? No, no they no. don't use escape plan, full <laughs> disclosure right there. Um, but you know, if you think about it, um, you know, what this, you know, you, the earliest example I can think of is, you know, the caveman. Uh, they had the caveman come up. I love you those. Know, so easy a caveman can do it. I, I, or you had my the favorite up. line from that is, I'll, I'll have the roasted duck. I love that. And just go, <laughs> go back to that. So go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, what does that have to do with car insurance? You know, here's a, here's an insurance, um, you know, Geico is the government employees insurance company. Yep. Now think about that. When's the last time you saw government employees associated with anything innovative? But they they came up with great campaigns and all that and because they thought outside of the box. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're a smaller company, when you're, you know, a one to fifty million dollar company, um, you don't your people don't necessarily have the freedom, the the free reign to do that because you're too busy running the business and you're and you're tasking your employees with too many things so that they're doing the work, but they're not necessarily creating. Right. And so when you've got an agency, all that agency does all day is come up with new ideas and create. Yes. Uh, they execute marketing strategies. They come up with marketing strategies and they, you know, they're working for multiple companies. And so they're not just thinking about how has my industry always done this? They're coming at it with fresh eyes and they're saying, Hey, yeah, we've got some ideas on how to reach the public. And we've been on the other side of this as a consumer, um, if, they, if it's a product that they may have used, uh, or at least they're looking at it from the outside instead of being trapped in that bottle trying to read the label. Right. Um, so with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the agency, though, there come some challenges. Um, and, um, you know, and, you know, as an agency owner, you know, I, I don't always like to bring up these challenges, but there, there are real challenges that you, that you face when working with an agency. Uh, the first one is really onboarding, making sure that the agency gets up to speed and understands the heartbeat of your company, that they understand your vision. They understand where you want to go and they're connected to your company in a way that you are you are treating them as your marketing department there they should be an extension of your company and that takes some time to onboard i mean it's not somebody can't come in and in a day really understand everything there is to know about your business right. um so and we've talked about that in some previous episodes about you know um those discovery calls and those discovery sessions where we're strategizing and creating the strategies around your marketing instead of just Oh, well, we're just going to make something, right? You know, no, we're creating strategies behind that. And as an agency, it does take time for us to get on board with that. Um, but 
sometimes you need both. You do. So when should you have both a, an in-house marketing director and an agency? Well, there's, there's some instances there. Um, if you already have a marketing director who has a solid plan and they just don't have the people to execute it, have that marketing director outsource to people who can, who can execute that vision. Let me jump in here. This would have been, when I was a marketing director, this would have been a dream for me. It would have been an absolute dream. It would have been like, you know, having ice cream and pizza every day and not gaining weight. I mean, it was, <laughs> that's how good this would have been because you've mentioned it before. Agencies can get creative. And the reason why they get creative is they're intentional about that creativity. Mm -hmm. When your marketing director, again, I'm talking to you, Mr. Business Owner, when your marketing director has zero margin and has, and when everything is urgent and everything is important, there's no way they're going to sustain any sort of creativity or innovation. Being able to, br to give them, empower them. Can you tell, can you tell I'm a disgruntled marketing director and um, <laughs> giving? We're and, almost a good cop, bad cop. Exactly. Of give empowering a marketing director um, with a solid agency will, will, will pay dividends beyond whatever you're paying that marketing director, because it's a, well, it's a force it, multiplier. It will increase what they're yes. able to accomplish for your company exponentially. Yes. I mean, when you, when you couple those people together, because you've got somebody who has a very clear understanding of the vision, but they also understand marketing so that they can talk marketing strategy effectively with your agency. That's a really good combination. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's a combination where the marketing director does not become redundant. They don't have to be threatened by the agency that comes in to execute. Mm -hmm. They can work with that agency and get a lot of stuff done and really make your marketing 10 to 100 times more effective. Let me jump in here. And, and that's when I was an agency owner, whoever my point of contact was, if they were not the CEO or the owner of the company in the back of my head, in this back of my little brain here, my goal other than executing a marketing plan was to make that marketing director a complete rock star in the eyes of the owner of the company. Mm -hmm. And if I was able to do that so that my, my agency wasn't going to be the rock star, my, my contact within that company, whether it was the marketing director, CMO or whoever, my goal and a good agency will do this. And I know you do this, Drew, uh, uh, mm -hmm. for your clients. A good agency will make whoever they're dealing with in that company, that marketing director, look like a complete rock star to the CEO. Right. Right. Because you are our best champion in your company. Yes. <laughs> and so marketing directors, you may be you may be looking at this saying, oh man, are they trying to discourage people from hiring marketing yeah. directors? No, we're not. Uh, marketing directors are often our best friends yes. in, in your company. But now if you don't have a marketing director and you need somebody to come in and create the strategy, create the vision, create all of that stuff, an agency can do that for you. Um, that's a great point. Some, there's some instances where maybe you feel like you need somebody to hire that's, that their full responsibility is there as that point of contact. Uh, you should always have a dedicated point of contact at your company with your agency, by the way. Um, you know, if your agency doesn't know who to contact at your company to make sure things get approved, to make sure that the vision's on track, to make sure that uh, we're tracking towards your goals, then we can't do our jobs and it winds up with the same frustrations oh, yeah. that the marketing director who can't do their job. The, the, yeah. the last thing you want, the first thing you don't want your marketing director to be playing whack-a-mole. The next thing right. is you don't want your agency playing whack-a-mole either. Exactly. So. And, and as an agency owner, I've been there as, as a former marketing manager, I have been there and that's never a fun thing. And, you know, as an, agency we have fired clients for that 
and and wait, l- l- wait, what? Wait, say. Uh, should I say that again? You should. You should because as an agency, we have fired clients for not allowing us to do the job that they hired us to do. For for making it ten times more difficult to do the job, um, and you know. A lot of a lot of agencies will charge PIA fees, mm. um, pain in the um, Beep. so, yep. <laughs> and um, we don't necessarily do that, but we we don't necessarily put up with it either. Now, there's always times in in any relationship, whether it's with your employees or whether it's with your agency or or whoever, you're you're always going to have little challenges to come, overcome. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when as a CEO you completely derail the process right. um, when there's nobody at the company that's, that's doing things and you just basically say, oh, okay, I'm going to write these people a check and, you know, go do it. And, and we don't have any communication that, that creates a big problem. And that's where you really need a dedicated person in that role. And it doesn't necessarily always have to be somebody who has been a marketing director. It could be somebody who, you know, especially if you're a smaller company, if you're if you're more in the one to ten million dollar range, maybe you don't need that full time marketing director, or maybe you just need somebody who's more of like um, an assistant with the company that does a, a few things. Right. Probably shouldn't be the accounting person. No. No. And I've been in in that situation. Yep. There's, um, but you know, but at, at the same time, the CEO is usually very, very, very busy. Um, as a CEO of a company, you're running a lot of things. And so you need to have somebody who's assigned to communicate with the agency, who's empowered to make approvals, who is empowered to make decisions on your behalf. And they should have to check in with you every now and then to make sure things are on track. But trying to wait on the CEO for things Again, we're kind of getting into the next episode, which we'll talk about this more in depth, but trying to wait on the CEO for things when they're extremely busy and, they, and they're traveling all around the country doing whatever, all the stuff that CEOs have to do is that derails your marketing efforts. Right. And so it's a lot better for us to work with a marketing director or another dedicated person at your organization so that we can help you grow as a company. Let me let, before now, we put a before we put a bow on this, and we've been guilty about not attaching numbers to this. So you're, you're you <laughs> opened the episode talking about a specific salary range for a marketing director, right? Uh, which is in that seventy uh, seventy thousand dollars a year uh, range. Now, if mm-hmm. you apply that to hiring an agency, and your contract with that agency is $70,000 a year. Drew, can can you just paint a quick picture of, uh, and you don't have to attach this to anything to your agency, but in agencies in general, typically $70,000 with a marketing agency uh, for a small business, that's a, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck there, aren't you? Well, yeah. And, you know, I can't speak for every other agency. I can only speak for what we do here right. at Escape Plan. And I know that, uh, that that amount will buy you quite a bit of our services. Uh, it, you know, gets you our entire team. It gets you, um, it gets you a lot of dedication. Right. Uh, and we're a boutique agency. We work with a handful of clients at any given time. And we work with those clients long term. For that 70 70- that you would mm-hmm. only get in house one marketing director mm-hmm. for that 70 correct me if i'm wrong you're getting a the skills of a marketing director possibly some development work we're getting possibly some social media possibly some graphic design possibly some other web development possibly this 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 and one you, point of yeah, contact you're social media absolutely. You're getting email campaigns you're getting pay per click experts you're, you're getting automation and with our agency and the plans that we have, I mean, all of that would be included in that amount. Right. Um, now we've talked about this before as a, as a small business, you should be planning on spending, you know, seven to 8% of your gross revenues, not your net, 
not your net profits, your gross revenues that you want to make this coming year on marketing. And the thing about marketing is it's an investment. So you have to invest that money before it pays off. Right. You can't just wait for your business to grow and then start investing in marketing. It doesn't work that nope. way, whether you're hiring staff or not. Uh, you have to invest in marketing first for it to pay off. It's just like, I can't wait for Google to get up to $4,000 a share and then, and then jump say, in. oh, well, I'm going to invest now. Yeah, right. And and expect to reap all the dividends of if I invested when it was a hundred dollars a share. Right. You know it doesn't work that way. Uh, investing is investment in the future, and so that's what marketing is. And so it's important to have a marketing agency that you trust. It's important to have people on staff that you trust with that, and it's important to give them the empowerment to do their jobs. Yes. And so whether you have a marketing director on staff or whether you don't, make sure the people that you have doing your marketing are empowered to do their jobs. They're capable, smart, educated people who know what they're doing, who have your best interest at heart, and they're ready to go out there and promote your business. Fantastic. Drew, any other final thoughts before we put a bow on this episode? <laughs> Well, you, you can tell I'm a little bit passionate about this. Uh, <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I, I would say the, the next thing that we should look at is what is our action tip this, uh, this month? And, uh, and really the thing that I want you to do, if you're a CEO out there, if you're a small business owner, um, even if you don't have any staff right now, think about what would your marketing dream team look like? Start with that director of marketing. Don't don't overcomplicate it with like VP of marketing, then the director, then the, you know, start with a director of marketing and then think about all of the different people that you would have on your marketing dream team and do a little bit of research. Go to salary.com or indeed.com or betterhelp.com. All these places have um, have salary guides on them. And kind of see, you know, what that budget looks like for your for your company and whether or not it would be more beneficial for you to hire that dream team or part of that dream team or hire an agency or a little bit of both. And, and if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to Google this stuff, reach out to Drew. He he right. can he can hold your hand through this process. And 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 at the end of that conversation, you'll you'll know whether or not you're you're ready for an in-house marketing director if you need to hire an agency like his he's that that would be well worth reaching out to drew and and talking about that so um drew well and that's right and, and we'll have a link in the description so uh so you don't have to memorize escapeplanmarketing.com <laughs> uh who is our sponsor for the marketing rocket fuel podcast that's by a the way. professional uh, segue so escape plan we make marketing rocket fuel there you that's what go. we do and uh and so in more ways than one. So Drew, uh, before we put a bow on this episode, uh, what are we, I, I want you to, this is, this is in the, I guess in the podcast world, uh, this is called a teaser. Um, what are we talking about <laughs> next episode? Uh, the next episode, we are going to talk about the biggest mistake CEOs of small businesses make, period. The single busy, biggest mistake that CEOs make, if you're running a small business, if you're running, whether it's whether it's a micro business and you're making sixty thousand dollars a year as your business, or whether it's a hundred million dollar a year business, this is the biggest mistake, and we see this all the time. And CEOs kill their own efforts; they squash their success by making this mistake. And so we're going to be talking about that in the next episode of Marketing Rocket Fuel. Um, and by the way, hey, if you, this is your first time listening to Marketing Rocket Fuel, uh, we are available on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, any place podcasts are listened to, we are there. And uh, be sure and like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you're on YouTube. And share this with your friends. We want to get this, this information out here to the masses. We hope this has been useful to you. Let us know if it was. Let us know if it wasn't. How we can do better. 
Excellent. Thanks, Drew. It's always good to spend some time with you. Hey, it's great to see you again, Michael, and uh, we will see you all on the next episode of Ideal Bye.